this is a TV episode that I like to describe as come and see TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is um <laughs> yeah. Not like that one. I would oh, I wonderful. would I, I would definitely call this theater of the mind. <laughs> yeah. And the theater of cruelty too, I would say like deeply alienating and 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 vicious. It is um, degrading. It makes you think oh, so about degrading. Like, this is really like this is sallow for wine moms. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is all of the degradation and like monstrous, obscene uh, displays of power and oppression. Uh, like, uh, but for people with uh, those signs in their front yard about how not racist they are. Yeah. No. I I, I like take back all my praise of Michael Haneke. Like they have achieved in six episodes. Six episodes of this absolute horrifying tripe what Hanaki has been trying to achieve his entire career it's true just the <laughs> nausea you feel when she's sitting with these people and nodding like a fucking wave okay. like she's wa- like she's a waving chinese uh, cat in a in a, in a <laughs> oh my god i am so glad i am so glad you said cat uh-huh. i am so no, glad you chinese said cat, cat. i thought you were going to say something else we all know from the from the buffet restaurants the lovely chinese friendly cat with the hand <laughs> only it's her head the lucky like, cat. The lucky cat. Just, yeah. I mean, my God, at least when uh, George W. Bush was painting uh, the people who he got maimed in Iraq, they weren't like in the <laughs> room with him. He was like doing it yeah. on the pictures. They weren't, he wasn't making them like have a fucking okay. lunch with them. Yeah. Boys, it's boys. Okay. We, we have, we have, we, okay. okay. Boys, we have too much to say. We have too much to say. We're, we're, we're getting too far afield. Let me just officially start the show. This is Chapo coming at you Thursday, September 15th. Will, Matt, and Felix, obviously, but joined by Catherine Krieger. Hello, resident woman here checking in. <laughs> and we have, thanks, we have, we have brought- thanks to uh, Catherine. You cannot be get mad at us for anything we say in this episode. It's legally okay. it, not allowed. Sorry, that always worked with Amber. So what? What? I'm is- a human. I'm a human shield against yep. allegations of misogyny for you all right now. So yep. okay, what, what is? If, what is? What if, what if I didn't meet two stuff? Like <laughs> oh well, that would really test my bounds. Don't put me in that situation. Okay. All right. <sighs> okay. So what? What is today's episode? What is the topic? What is on the slate for Come and See TV? That is right. Okay, we have we have watched uh, Matt, Felix, Catherine, and myself. We're only able to make it through the first two episodes of the show. Matt, of course, um, you know, like has opened the lament Glutton configuration. For Matt has opened the lament configuration. He has passed through the veil. He has many <laughs> more sites to show us. We are talking, of course, about Apple TV's new series starring Hill Dog. And 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 Shell Dog, <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton, their new show profiling women from all walks of life, gutsy women. It's called Gutsy Folks, Gutsy Gals, and it is one of the most. Uh, how should I describe this? This is one of the most like nauseating spectacles of condescension towards every human being alive, Horrible. but especially but especially women. That is oh, like yes, this is I, about about the ladies, and this is just it is. It's like an issue of Screw Magazine. <laughs> Might as well be you, Al Goldstein out there. If you had, if this was, if you this program was your only like encounter with women, if you were from like an island that was only men, sort of like a reverse of Wonder Woman, sort of reverse of Amazonia, <laughs> uh, you would think that like it's just like an inferior species, like it's Brave New World, and they're like gammas. It's like, oh, they're deprived of oxygen in the womb. So essentially, like this show is like an absurd vanity project for Hillary Clinton and her daughter. And a huge cash yeah. grab. And like, I, but the thing is, like, we'll, yeah, we will just get like into the, the Apple just dumping money in front of her house. I, like, yeah, like the, the, we will get into the mother daughter dynamic, what I think is like the cruelest part of this spectacle. But yeah. essentially, like the idea is there are gutsy women. There are gutsy women everywhere. And Hillary and her daughter, Chelsea, are going to like, you know, take take us on a tour for America and the world of just profiling, you know, in each episode is like a different topic. But essentially, they are like a a series of very loosely structured interviews that Hillary and Chelsea conduct in various locations and, and, and you know, like uh, professions and like uh, social uh, issues of just women. They're here to, they're here to like, you know, there are gutsy women everywhere. Literally and, profiles in courage. Yeah. But yeah, of women. Yeah. Profiles of women. <laughs> you know what you could call it? You could call it a, a, a streaming binder full of women. 
Yes. Remember that? There's, remember the binders? Yeah. Full of hey, remember the binders? And the funny thing is, like, you know, I, I, I'm I, sure in later episodes, they like they profile, like, here's a woman firefighter. But they are mainly just hanging out with celebrities. Mm-hmm. Like they, you know, like yeah. they, Megan the Stallion, uh, Goldie Hawn. You know? <laughs> it's 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 their fame. It's their fellow Eloy, and then a few traumatized Morlocks. <laughs> that, that's every episode. Yeah, and it's if a heavy a nor- brew of those two things. <laughs> if you're a normal person and you're in this show, something horrible happened to yes, you. Yes, you got. You've you either got, like you got, like fed you, you through lost, industrial thresher. Yeah, you lost thirty percent of your frontal lobe in a car accident. You know, you were the moment you were born, you were hit with an acid attack. You, 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 you just everything bad that can happen can happen to you. You're like the, you're like the cashier in No Country for Old Men who <laughs> in, encounters Anton Sugar and then just like like lives to tell the tale, but understands that he has like come into contact with some otherworldly evil far beyond his comprehension. Uh, and and, and then there's. And and then and then there's Megan the Stallion. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh God, the wow. Okay. We'll get the to first. It. Okay. Like, look, if, if if you're brave enough, I mean, like, like the the episodes vary, and like so some of them, the, the second episode I thought was very boring, but the first episode of first, this they show really gutsy, know how to get you going off the bat. The first episode of this show, gutsy. Like, if you watch one, if you. Folks, if you watch one hour of television on TV this year, <laughs> I cannot stress to you enough that the first episode of Hillary and Chelsea Clinton's show Gutsy, which is about comedy, it is about women being funny and the challenges faced by women in comedy mm-hmm. is one of the funniest hours of television <laughs> I have ever seen. My jaw was on the floor. Women, watching this women episode. can be funny. Yeah. So starting out this series with comedy was genius. Because Hillary laughs like Charles Foster Kane claps when his mistress is singing at the opera. <laughs> <laughs> like they're they're they're, they're uh, uh, <laughs> like it feels like a quarter of this episode is them just like watching like shitty stand like they go they go see stand oh, up and, and, and it's like Earth. and it's like um it'll be like a woman comedian who's up there and she'll be like um I got promoted to team manager but on LinkedIn uh. I found out that the previous person who had this job, who was a man, made more. And that's called a woman's promotion. Like, something like that. <laughs> and Hillary, Hillary, Hillary is just sitting there, like, laughing, like, a, like when the Velociraptor gets to the car in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Did you notice okay. that they were wearing masks? They were the only two the wearing only masks in that the comedy wild. club. They are the only ones <laughs> in the club. To the hide the fact the that they, they don't know what to do with their faces while comedy yeah, is happening. Like, the rictus was probably too unsettling, so they just said, hey, give them masks. So <laughs> You look like, like they the got sh- hit with the Smilex. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, like, the structure of this show is very confusing because it's not like like they, yeah. they blend everything together. It's Lens not like you know, three. It just like it, it, you know, bends time and space. <laughs> <laughs> around the well, area, it's a Chelsea. liminal zone. Where yeah, yeah. And also, like, also like location. The, yeah, yeah. It's like you jump around your life. Within the first thirty seconds of the first episode, they are in Paris, New York, and Philadelphia in like yeah. a mind bending like it, these short amount of time. It feels like the beginning of like a shitty action movie where it's just like establishing shots of like Dubai, the Gray uh, Man, Amsterdam, yeah. like <laughs> as many world capitals as you can get in. She's like Doctor Manhattan, but she can get to any location at, at simultaneous <laughs> spots on the timeline to like nod along when someone describes being like beaten with a mallet by their stepfather. <laughs> yeah, she's always doing the same pleasant smile and nodding along. So, okay, like, so, uh, so the first yeah. episode about women in comedy, it uh okay, it features sort of a round table of uh women stand-up comedians at Caroline's in New York. It features them going bowling with Wanda Sykes. Yeah. And then best of all, it features them going to Clown College in Paris. Don't forget having tea with Amy Schumer. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah, yes. Also, also. Oh having tea yes, with Amy high Schumer. tea with Miss Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the okay. This episode. Keep in mind, this episode is about like essentially like can women be funny? They, at one point, they dig up the corpse of Christopher Hitchens and pelt rocks at it. <laughs> <laughs> it begins with uh, Hillary and Chelsea sitting on a park bench in Paris and going, "I love you being in Paris." And then they start talking about how much they love knock knock jokes oh in their my family. God. The relatable thing that families <laughs> love to do: tell knock knock jokes to one another. And um, he goes, "You know, we told so many knock knock jokes." And then, like, you know, how can laughter uh, change the lives of women? And then, like, 
then, then like Chelsea, uh, Hillary Clinton dropped, or was it Hillary or Chelsea who dropped this joke? She says, why are there so few knock knock jokes about America? Because freedom rings. Just, I, uh, I, 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 I can't I like even it. fill that dead air. Like it's, it's that like deathly unfunny. And later on, they cut back to like the same scene of them telling knock knock jokes. And Chelsea tells the like uh, European one, uh, or no, uh, Hillary. That was Hilda. H- Hillary does, and Chelsea says this is undignified. And I was just like, yes, this whole show is like this is a big, big blinking arrow. It's interesting for Chelsea to say that that's undignified because every time they meet a new person, Chelsea start her introduction is always like, here's a story about why I suck. Like she instantly, she, every scene with her is undignified because they'll meet like, whether it's Megan the stallion or fucking Amy Schumer or like, yeah, some, some woman who like, uh, she got run over by a steamroller by Harvey Weinstein and totally flattened. <laughs> and she's shaped like a fucking, she's shaped like a manhole cover. And they're just, they're holding a mic up to her. Uh, Chelsea starts out by being like, you know, I tried, I tried to rap once and I was, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, chased by the black student council at Oxford. <laughs> or like, you know, this reminds so me of when I, Rush Limbaugh made fun of me. Right. Okay, she so like- starts out that thing by being like, um, I love that scene where they talk about like how comedians make fun of her and like Rush Limbaugh made fun of her and how it like made her not like comedy because she goes like, um, you know, I've always, and then I think it's Amy Schumer goes, people always made fun of how you're ugly and stupid. <laughs> 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 like she automatically so, okay. gets why she doesn't it, like it. Okay. In the Caroline's, in the Caroline's round table, yeah. Oh, yeah. when like, so they're sitting around with a bunch of these like uh, women stand-up comedians, they just saw their sets and they're just like, so What's it like to be a woman, comic, a whatever? So, uh, and then Chelsea, Chelsea says, you know, I've always had a different perspective on comedy because SNL made fun of me. So she was like, like, I grew up with a different perspective. Like, I didn't think comedy was okay or funny. I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing, <laughs> actually. She said, she, 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 she said, comedy is not okay. And then one of the, and one of the, and then one of the women comics asked her, like, like so, so who are your favorite comics? And she goes freezes and just goes i, I don't know like well, the yeah, most obvious she follow like up she wasn't she perhaps. literally does not enjoy comedy because it makes her think yeah. about the time rush limbaugh made fun of her which is like and that well actually wild. actually she she, she lets insane. rush limbaugh off the hook because she's like oh like you know this is about politics she's like, mostly mad about snl she's mostly mad about snl it's because they were like there was a whole writer's room of people like who sat down and decided this is okay to make fun of a, a she was really just whatever. subtweeting adam friedland <laughs> By the way, we'll get to the second episode. They read their mean tweets. The fact that the Adam Friedland tweet Holy didn't shit. get brought up is insane to me. Because it was too yeah. good. It was, yeah, it was too funny. The actual burns in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're just yeah. going to go, you stupid uh, skank, you uh, Soros. They're not going to yeah. have any actual, like, dozens, any, like, real bangers. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> the, like, the thing with Chelsea being, like, made fun of a lot when she was, like, 13 it is one of those things where it's like, I've always like agreed that that was like mean, like where it's like, oh, yeah, she's like awful. an ugly bitch and she's like 12. It's terrible. It's like, yeah, no, I, I don't think that's like OK to do. But then it's sort of like retroactively proved OK by her appearance in this. I mean, it's sort of like, <laughs> OK, you, they you had a point. To- you you decided to prove yourself a villain after that, you know. Well, I mean, okay, like, she, okay, yeah, like, like the only bad, like the only thing that Chelsea Clinton did that I thought was like horrible ever was when she was like basically implied like Ilan Omar was like un-American and like yeah. anti-Semitic. The yeah. reason for the Adam Friedland tweet, but yeah. that's an insight enough into her brain, you know. That's enough well, for me. Okay, let's talk about Chelsea for a second, because like this. Holy me, shit! Th- this to me was like the cruelest part of this show, because like you know, Catherine, like I, I think you you very accurately like like sort of like summarize like Chelsea's entire personality, the way she is on camera, and, like lack of affect. Yeah, like her her total lack of affect, and, and like you said that like essentially she is a, a front of the class kid who has done everything right, gotten all the good grades, but has never had a real job. Ever. Nope. Like she doesn't have any experiences yeah. to draw on. She's yeah, she's, she's never like had a black an actual hole. So she's like she's like the, the she's never she's, she's worked so hard to have like the best the best education to have the best opportunities in life that she has never done anything on her own or like she's never done anything with. She's just raw material. She has never no. had any real life experience or or, or a job, an actual real yeah. job doing anything that might like make you a person. So like the only way, so the only way she relates to people or is on screen to talking about everything, anything is just a kid who wants to talk to teacher and impress them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it. 
that is really it. Like, ooh, like okay, I won't talk to these kids. I'll talk. I'll I'll have this conversation with Miss Hannigan here. Yeah, she she like she makes Teddy Kennedy's like she she makes it seem like Ted Kennedy lived the plot of David Copperfield. (laughs) (laughs) Can we talk about tea with Amy Schumer though? Because this feature my favorite. This feature, one of my favorite like introductions to an interview I've ever seen. So they're getting tea with Amy Schumer and Hillary Clinton goes, uh, she goes, Amy, it's so great to see you after your experience with endometriosis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she said this oh is after God. this incredible experience with endometriosis. This, inc- yeah. <laughs> this incredible experience with endometriosis. Which, like what? How's your pussy? <laughs> How's your fucked up pussy? That, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a trip to Disney World. This incredible experience with well, endometriosis. This, the, I, I was just struck by it. This was like 10 minutes in and we're already like the woman show. We're already talking about endometriosis. And then, you know, throughout the, the first episode, it's like a hit parade. We start with endo. Then we're talking about periods. Then we're talking about menopause. Then we're talking about pregnancy. It's like, yeah, all the woman stuff. And then, like, and then there's a long montage of Amy Schumer vomiting. Oh my yeah, god! She, she, had, and she, also, she pointed. Oh god! Oh god! Yeah! What the <laughs> fuck was that? They had an actual montage of her puking. Look, and like, I, I don't, don't want to make like, like post puke vids. You know, I, you know I, I, I thank God every day I was born. Um, Save that for only fans, Amy. To, uh, <laughs> without being shackled to, you know, having a period uh, for like you know half of every month, and like you know, endometriosis makes it like basically every month of your life. Um, unbearably painful and she had a difficult pregnancy and then she had like morning sickness basically 24 7 from like the moment of conception to birth that seems like a fucking nightmare i'm not trying to make light of that but there is a long montage of all the videos amy schumer posted on social media (laughs) of her just vomiting into a bag (laughs) which is actually pretty funny (laughs) i have to admit she also okay. said that uh, uh that if endometriosis affected men it would be cured by now and it's like well maybe but i mean she she did of course think of like but we have boner pills and it's like well maybe it's easier to make a boner pill than to fix endometriosis I'm sorry okay. yeah she said well like her thing about boner pills she actually talked about another Adam Friedland connection they obliquely <laughs> reference they obliquely reference I'm not saying Blue Adam Chew. and Dee, I'm saying that there's a reference to Blue Chew uh, and they said they made boner pills chewable and it's like you can do anything to a pill you fucking idiot you can they they put they put child for they put like um. They put like an ultra hard coating on Oxycontin 80 milligrams. Like all so, that like, work that they do on that to make it chewable. Yeah. That's not done by the scientists. That's done by the marketing department. No, right. no and actual doctors are used up uh, doing that. And <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't do that. They didn't do that because it's like, um, oh, how do take this? You dumb bitches. Yeah. Nothing for endo- endometriosis. You can chew <laughs> like, it's just like an insane. Yeah. And also, as Matt said, very easy to make a boner pill. You're just like you're, you're increasing blood it, flow. Right. It's kind of like it's like sort of works kind of like how a popper does or any type of upper. <laughs> like, whereas with endometriosis, you have to do all this shit to the fucking uterus. I don't even know how that works. Would that be an upper or a downer? I don't know. <laughs> and I'm well, in charge of making you're their man, pills. Felix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Felix is the head of the Pfizer uh, pussy division. Yeah. I'm working really hard. I didn't like what she said about me. <laughs> okay. Can we, can we now, can we now, can we now tra- transition to the, the, the segment of this episode that I think was like, honestly, <laughs> one of my favorite moments I've ever seen on TV. This is the section in Paris where they go to study at a clown college. Clowning around. And, and she's like, uh, she's like, okay. Hillary introduces it by saying Paris is the world renowned home of clowning. <laughs> Okay, yeah. but like, okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about the se- the segment where they're actually doing like clowning and they put like red noses on. And they do, they do, you know, pratfalls and and slapstick or whatever. I'm talking about like my favorite favorite moment of the show, maybe my favorite like five minutes of television that I've seen all year long, is when they sit down with the legendary uh, clowning instructor, this sort of like wizened clown wizard who has taught Sasha Baron Cohen and like Emma Thompson or whatever. He's a guy. He's this ancient ancient French man called Philippe and they're sitting down with him at a cafe and like I don't know what this guy thought 
he was going to be interviewed about probably was like they were like oh would you like to talk to Hillary Clinton about clowning and he was like yeah we and then they <laughs> sit down this guy's like hunched over this old wizard and they're like they're like you're one of the greatest clowns of all time but like what is it like how can you be a clown I'm like what do you think about clowning for women and he's like is, 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 clowning is a uh, this is very dangerous for the women. And he's just looking around like they're asking all these questions about being a woman. He's like, I, mean, I thought I was in the Naga Mountains and Clowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Hillary's yes. just I, nodding maniacally the entire time. They have no fucking idea what he's on he about. Was, he was on a different fucking planet than them. He looks so confused and frightened. Yeah, this was, okay, this is like the greatest fucking whiplash I've ever seen. Because like the previous scene where they're at the table Towards the end, like Hillary's true personality kicks in and she starts like treating the comedians like Littlefinger in King Joffrey's court, kind of <laughs> like she starts like kind of she starts, starts sort of like torturing them a little bit where, he's, where she's like, oh, do you ever like feel fat when you want to go on stage? Like just being the mean <laughs> person she is. Yeah, like asking then, the fat one. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, but I'm then, sure like, I'm sure people call you uh, call you a towel head when you get on stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then they you are instantly transported overseas. And I wrote this down as they talk to a creature who is 80 percent mucus <laughs> like this guy. This guy's government classification on his ID in France is occupation grotesque. <laughs> He looked like he looked like the pedophile, the first pedophile who like bit all the other pedophiles to create pedophile race. <laughs> the guy who invented pedophilia. But I mean, like, yeah. I, look, look, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to slander the, the the grand master clown of, of France. You know what we can't slander the clown man. He's the he's the just, I don't want to slander the, the personification of like, Me Too as a concept. He's like, he's like eighty nine years old. He looked bewildered and terrified, and he's just like, "Is he saying I'm not being a clown?" Is that you have to be? It is a, a mistake, and it is the mistake and the being the tramp or whatever. And like, and then they're just like, "What about being a woman is different for a comedian?" And he's just looking around nervously, going, "I know about the clowns. I don't. I don't. I don't know why." <laughs> well, they also they also have like a, a woman clown well, the, there. The, the oh, woman oh, clown oh, who feels this Chelsea's tits. Is, this is the best part. Oh my God. Yeah, not only is it very clear that like the OG clown instructor like does not think that she is a funny clown. She's an affront to clowning. But like when she engages with Hillary and or not not Hillary, uh, Chelsea, and literally gropes her, which uh, you can tell from Chelsea's face, she did not know she was committing to being groped so, when she allowed that to proceed. So the setup here, the setup here is that they're they're next to the the clown wizard, <laughs> and then this other the woman I've never fucking wizard. heard before, who's a woman clown. And she's a legendary clown, lady clown. She, she, from, uh, she's a legendary from, lady clown. Yeah, wherever they perform. Is that she does like a gender swapped clown performance where she's sort of like the classic, uh, you know, uh, uh, clownish tramp figure. She's in drag. Yeah. She, yeah she, and then like she said, so she says she does a, a thing in her bit where she'll like approach a woman in the front row and like leer towards her hands spread out to like lean in to just get grabbed. Does the Al do, Franken. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, she does yeah. the Al Franken maneuver. And then she pauses at the last minute to like ask consent to be like, uh, oh, can I? And then she's like, yeah, like I'm just sort of like, you know, like like making people uncomfortable or like living in the silence, the moment, all, the, all this, you know, pretentious bullshit or whatever. And then she does it to Chelsea and she leans forward and she's like, can I? And Chelsea goes, yeah, okay. I think totally not thinking she would actually go through with it. And this woman... Then follows up, leans in, and gives both of Chelsea's breasts a honk. a honk. She gives him a honk, and then Chelsea, like, because she knows she's on camera and she's playing along with it. She's like, ha, ha. she's like, that was the, the first time someone touched that area other than my husband. My area. My objects. <laughs> my, my area. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> she yeah. was not having a good time. That was, I mean, like, this entire segment is insane because, like, we kind of brushed over France, the world famous, like the epicenter of clowns. Like, it's I don't the think clown that's capital. the first time. I thought anyone, Washington, yeah. D.C. was the clown capital. Oh, but it's like, 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 like this, this, like the, the clown expert, I don't know who found him. Presumably, whoever that is, is getting like. It went under a bridge. In. Yeah. Whoever, who, who, he answered, whoever, they answered three of his questions. His riddles <laughs> when they brought him into town yeah. on a fucking giant portobello mushroom. I was <laughs> They're plying him with uh with uh, with mold wine and 
and pipe weed. Yeah, like large gold coins in a sack. <laughs> I was imagining like the movies that guy must have been in in France in his prime. And I just like probably half of them take place in the Holocaust. Probably like half of them. He's probably made the same movie like 50 times. Like the movie they kept making in France where it's like, oh, what if a clown was in Auschwitz and like cheered up everyone? It's like just like some some weird, like weirdly like pro Vici movie where like the, the, after the post credit scene is like uh the concentration camp guards, uh, they're shown in like Spandau prison and then they're like doing some of the clowns bullshit to show that like humor can rehabilitate. <laughs> That's probably he was probably in like 170 of those movies. <laughs> okay. I cannot stress enough, though, just, just like the, just the visual gag of Philippe the clown wizard <laughs> hunched over eyes darting around in absolute <laughs> terror <laughs> sitting at a cafe being being asked questions being that, have, that, have, being, that have nothing to do with clowning like they <laughs> captured him in a giant mason jar <laughs> like he was yeah, flitting around he was flitting around a flower right and they just got him in the mason jar now he's just terrified they gotta put a leaf in there with they did him. not poke enough oxygen holes in the lid no, it just it shows like the how like just nothing the premise is, how just empty all of this is. Yeah, the fact just, they that don't you care. can get yeah, the fact that you can get like yeah, a cl- like a um a once respected clown with Alzheimer's <laughs> and like have Hillary. Are we and talking Chelsea Hillary just, Clinton? <laughs> folks, just but have that like, that 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 <laughs> that you have like you have that yeah this like horribly like confused man this poor man who just like wants to talk about the time that he like stuck his seltzer spray down Mata Harry's pussy <laughs> and like nothing to do nothing to do nothing to do with the premise of like how like women brave brave women gutsy women brave outfit brave children pregnancy pregnancy brave womb womb endometriosis that you could just say all the shit that Hillary says to like everyone she encounters, and it still feels like more or less the same as every other segment. You know, it's all interchangeable. Yeah, like I I can't stress to you, like to you enough that like uh, probably a third of the screen time in any episode of this show is dedicated to just cuts of Hillary just sort of like nodding sagely with a wry smile as she like like the Chinese without, cat. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, does not relate in any way to what's being told to her, like the person at all. So like, she nope. just like, that's the program she runs in her head when she just zones out. It's just sort of like yeah. this wry smile and nod. And even this, if, she's, even if she's like, listening like, to something that you shouldn't be smiling and nodding at, like it's her only in her brain is the Homer Simpson ukulele playing cow. Or she's like, just uh, like th- fantasizing about doing a Vince Foster to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I, I, okay, I want I want to get back to like then they cut back to the the Caroline's round table. And I want to get into another another a line that made me like do a spit take because of how funny it was. So like she's talking to this group of women comedians and she's going to like, you know, you're breaking barriers about race. Oh, my you're, God. You're breaking barriers about disability. And then she turns to uh, Lori Kilmartin, which is the only one of these comics I've ever heard before. And she just goes, I, but you're breaking barriers with death. How funny is that? <laughs> No one could say Hillary isn't funny. Like that line delivery is incredible. Yeah. How funny is that? How funny is that? Oh my and okay, God. like and, and here, here's How another. How funny is another, death, folks? <laughs> here's here's another here's another another big like in, in the segment with Wanda Sykes. Uh, Wanda Sykes talks about like the stand up set she did at Madison Square Garden like right after the election where she called Donald Trump a racist and a sexist and like half the audience booed her. And it was this moment that she was like talking about like, well, you know, like I, I knew I had to like sort of like, you know, turn this around. You know, I'm on stage like the room was leaving me or whatever. But I knew I wasn't going to walk off stage. And Hillary goes, oh, oh, you never walk off stage. You never walk off stage. More, and, like, more, more like you don't go out, out on stage at all. Yeah, yeah you like, like John that in context of the Javits Center. Yeah, I, I, I love that the Wanda Sykes thing has one of my favorite things that happens in this entire episode. And it's when what they're sort of talking about, like, what's OK and not OK in comedy, because yeah. like um, Wanda talks about how she brings up, she starts out by saying, like, you can't joke about the same things you could joke like may, maybe 20 years ago. And Hillary immediately in one of her first genuine moments of this entire thing goes like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, you know, you it's completely not OK to talk about all these things that it was like 
understood to be okay as subjects of uh, of humor or whatever tortured way she would say it. Um, because she is at the end of the day, a 70, like three year old lib, you know, she has the opinions that someone of that age and like of that generation would have. Uh, and then Chelsea like sort of just fucking pumps the brakes and catches that this could be a potentially bad moment <laughs> or bad clip and goes, um, yeah. but, but you have to listen to people when they're offended and take that into account. And Hillary goes, yep, absolutely. We need to have accountability. There must be accountability. But she goes, I love it. Yeah. But accountability is a good thing. Yep. And again, I can't stress enough oh. how much Chelsea has just disappeared from this entire show. I can't like I, that was the only thing I can remember her saying at they will, all. They will yeah. literally cut back to Chelsea and Chelsea will be like, yeah. And then they'll cut back to Hillary. <laughs> Chelsea's Chelsea's role is either to be like to be like reek. To, you know, go up into sort of like uh, break the ice with any group of women they talk to by talking about like. I don't know, a time that she fell into an aquarium or like, you know, <laughs> uh, she was, she was beating fucking the queen Elizabeth and a bird shit on her. Just any one of the, any one of the horrible degrading things that just naturally happens to her and no one else, or to be like Hillary's handler to like keep Hillary from saying things that like, yeah, a 73 year old woman would say. Well, like, like the, the clown master general, uh, he, he told me, <laughs> <laughs> he, he talks about how one of the fundamental like parts of clowning is quote unquote the flop and like how you you know when you're flopping and like you have to kind of lean into the skid you know like the flop is a part of clowning right and I think like Chelsea is there to be the flop in the show like she's Indeed. the heel yeah mm -hmm. um, she's there to make Hillary look good and, and also other... there to channel the resentments of the audience for this, which is people who really look up to and identify with Hillary Clinton, who probably have an ambiguous relationship with their own children that they see reflected in uh, the relationship with Chelsea. Oh, my God. Ambiguous is the best way I've ever heard the Hillary Chelsea relationship described. They are like, oh, my God, they're like uh, two anti heroes on like a Netflix show called like Blood Law. <laughs> <laughs> They don't, uh, they don't even seem related. Like they don't. They don't no, seem to have any particular have affection any, for each they other. Don't, they don't have any chemistry between each they, other. They the don't way, have any no. rapport. Like the, like the way they relate to each other is feels so. When, when they're telling those fucking knock knock jokes, and, and they're both just like it sounds like they're reading fucking lines from a script. You know, just like not the way a mother and a daughter who know each other should relate. I'll say this now because it's a germane. In a later episode that you guys didn't watch, they talk to Jane Goodall, the chimp lady, and there it's. Jane Goodall and her daughter on one, two sides of a coffee table. And then coming in from uh, America on the screen is Chelsea. And she's sitting at a similar tiny table. And when they showed the, the scene and it was cutting between her and the other perspectives, I, I kept having to wonder, like, wait a minute, is she there or not? Because it was the exact same like way that they were, uh, uh, like when they're in the same room, they have the exact same amount of like sense of space as they do here. Like, I don't notice a difference when she's piping in from across uh, on, on the screen because they're always, even when they're on the same, they're both on the same, in the same shot at the same time. It's like they're being divided. It's like they're being piped <laughs> in via satellite. Hillary, <laughs> Hillary is actually like just astral projecting on their into this entire show. Yeah. Like, she's not actually there at all. She might be a hologram. They have like a biological satellite delay. And I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I I, okay. I I I feel like I feel like um if you like the like a the award winning version of the show is the one that shows like what their real banter is like you know like yeah. the four times a year they see each other where it's it just like you know Hillary probably sees Chelsea and goes like oh uh it's brave to not brush your hair when you go out or something just something like weird and like shitty. the way Selena yeah. Myers talks to Catherine yes you yeah. know like oh I, oh I think it's so bold of you to wear that that print that uh, uh accentuates your your fat hips you know yeah. like yeah I would love to hear them have like the their real dialogue of like a hissing match over a $900 electric toothbrush like the real shit I would assume like imagine like when they're taking a car to like go film I'm sure it's just silent uh, oh my, yeah. One more detail from the uh, the Wanda Sykes segment that I I, I simply must share. Okay, so like the, the 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 sort of the framing for the Wanda Sykes hangout is that they're bowling. 
they're bowling together. And then there's a scene where like they're showing Wanda Sykes throw it down the lane, and she's like, you know, ooh, get it, pick up a spare, and she's like, you know, I, you know, I try to, I, I'm, I gotta look good even if I'm bad, blah blah. You know, bowl, classic bowling, classic bowling spoofs and goofs. You know, a fun thing to do with family, friends. So then they show Hill Dog get up, get up to the lane, and she's like, all right, I'm gonna do my best or whatever. And they like they they show her go back, extend to go back to roll. Then it cuts away completely. Just to the pins falling and, and down. And they're like, no, no, like, no, 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 you don't even see the pins fall down. You hear the sound effect of pins knocking down. And then it cuts to the computer screen. They're like, oh, like you've knocked down nine pins. And they're like, wow, you did great. Complete perjury on behalf of well, like these shoddy, filmmakers. Shoddy filmmaking. Like you're supposed to show the middle action. I mean, like there's no reason why they could not have shown it. Like, well, No, because it didn't happen. It was a, it it was a scam all not happen. She did not actually ball. knock those pins down. They're there's doing a, a there's fraud. There's a lot of creative a, a, editing. A fandango. There's a lot of creative editing in the show that's like that. Like, did you notice um, when, when they're, uh, it's, is it the second episode when they're painting with Megan the Stallion? Like, uh, Chelsea and Hillary are both like turning around their shitty paintings. You don't actually see Hillary's painting be turned around. You know, like, <laughs> that's true. Like she, she won't allow even that much vulnerability in. They, they weren't going to show Hillary's painting because it would look exactly like Patrick Bateman's like doodles on the New York Times crossroads section. <laughs> Bone, blood, guts. Uh, all right. Like to, to wrap up the first episode about comedy, it ends in the absolute perfect way, which is Hillary Clinton literally saying to Chelsea, she goes, you know, uh, one of our dear friends, who mastered the art of comedy? Oh my God, Madeline Albright with her pins. <laughs> and she, she says, oh she says, Madeline God. Albright. Ma okay, the Pri queen of comedy. Prior, Carlin, Madeline Albright. <laughs> this okay. This I was, you know, in a state of horror and delight throughout all of this until this scene, which, um, you know, shades of shades of Chrisman uh, um, on McArdle many years ago. This was one of the most infuriating things I have ever seen because they talk about how Madeline Albright was so funny, which just everyone knows. You know, she was like Bernie <laughs> Mac every time she got <laughs> every time she was Cat every Williams. Time that Madeline I ain't afraid Albright, of you motherfuckers to Saddam yeah, Hussein. Right. Well, you know, well, she's saying that to the five hundred thousand Iraqi children starving to death. <laughs> yeah. uh, but she, she, like they talk about how she always just you know diffused the situation with a joke, and they. The best example of this, everyone knows, is the comedy in Madeleine Albright's pins, the pins that yes. she wore. Oh, my and God. They talk about how, you know, when she was when she was meeting uh, Saddam, she wore like a pin with a fucking missile on it. No, 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 no. So Saddam, it, no, Saddam, she wore a snake pin because Saddam called her a snake. When oh, right, she was okay. negotiating oh! ballistic missile defense treaties with Russia, she wore a pin with a missile on it. And then the Russian person was just like, is that one of the nuclear missiles you all pointed at us? And like she, she almost blew up these talks with, <laughs> with her pin diplomacy. Which doesn't seem like a very <laughs> diplomatic thing to do. Right. No, th th those two things are great examples of things where diplomacy failed. Where, <laughs> yes. right, like when she, by the time she talked to Russia, it could have like at least not been like the main geopolitical adversary. And well, look now when she talked to Saddam, um, Ask the fucking half million Iraqi children and then later the two million more dead how diplomacy worked with Madeleine Albright and her pin. So, you know, not funny, not good at her actual stated job of diplomacy. It's not her actual job, of course. Like, just one of the most fucking underrated evil pieces oh, of shit. Oh, a monster. The whole One era. of the worst. But, like, okay, just, but that, that just... That sickened me to the point. I had to walk away. I had to walk away. A little okay, bit. but the the episode ends with a, a, like a, just a, a still image of Madeline Albright, and it says "dedicated to Madeline Albright." But then, as the credits roll, this is maybe one of my favorite parts of this episode. As the credits roll, they play a montage of Madeline Albright's jokes. Oh my god! That are like wow. this is supposed to demonstrate demonstrate her mastery of the art of comedy outside just the pin she wears to fuck up very important diplomatic summits. They cut to, it's like, it's her on Colbert and she's sitting there and she goes, when I came here, to, like when I came here today on the train, uh, someone offered me a wheelchair and they said, would you need a wheelchair? And she said, no, I'm going to kick ass on Colbert. That's and not it was, a joke. That's, and it was that's like, not a punchline. Okay, like, okay, this is, this is Stephen Colbert. This is like, you know, late night TV comedy, like even Fallon, 
could not have mustered a pity laugh for her. Colbert literally just says, oh, like the jokes that Albright's chef mentions are megaton bombs. They fall like bricks. <laughs> they, they fucking land like a lead bomb, balloon. Bomb city. It is bomb after bomb after bomb. She could not even ring a pity laugh out of Stephen Colbert. She like is the not getting booked interview on the next open mic. Oh my! It Man was who good. is always crying. The man who is yeah. never not weeping. The worst thing that Czechoslovakia ever did, uh, besides changing their name three times and confusing and annoying everyone. Uh, is letting her family leave. <laughs> so he spent a lot of time, like, like I said, I, I truly have to stress that the first episode of this show about comedy was one of the funniest hours of TV I've ever seen. The second episode, which is about women dealing with hate online. The gutsy women refuse hate. Yeah, about refusing hate was dreadfully boring. Also deeply offensive to me. Oh, Dread- oh, oh refusing hate yeah. is boring to you? Uh, oh, also like... Grotesque. They they kept saying like like using it as a thing people say like look at these women who are refusing hate like that's that's like a, an activity that people do or like yeah we all we all love to refuse hate in our daily lives it's like what does that even mean I, well, practically what the episode is actually about is rather than women refusing hate it's women sitting around at brunch reading mean tweets about themselves and essentially yes. bathing in the hate yes. and attention that they get I like this episode more than comedy. I actually, oh, okay. like, it's mostly dull. It's mostly shitty. I agree with you. But there are a few parts that I think are, like, fantastic. Uh, yes, I like, yes. I, I love the first woman we meet who's just like. Oh, um, my God. She's just like, I'm, she's I'm just a like, former near Nazi. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like, she's just this fucking, like, dunce from Baltimore who's like, I used to be a Nazi and I forgot to get my swastika tattooed up. <laughs> I was me. I was me with Black Li- Black Lives Matter, and they said, uh, "Why do you not co- cover up your swastika?" And I said, "I like I I I want to have it there to remember, you know, what for what I was doing Nazism for." And she said, "That could still hurt people's feelings." And anyway, I forgot to cover it up. So it, it's it, a it, smash cut. Like it starts with them kayaking, and then just like it, like a like a smash verbal cut to. Uh, oh, so you like kayaking. And Hillary's like, what's that tattoo? And she's like, oh, it's a white power symbol. Yeah, Hillary's just like, what's that tattoo on your leg? And it's like, it's like a fucking Celtic cross. And she's like, yeah, that's a former you know, Nazi white power symbol. And Hillary goes, wow. She's, she's like, she's, she's, like still, fucking, she's still <laughs> smiling and nodding. She's like, you Owen know? Wilson. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> this, I felt like this woman is like, you can't get mad at her for being a neo-Nazi because she probably couldn't conceive of a number as high as six million. <laughs> <laughs> she is just. She's like, she's you are the punk. definition of a gutsy Nazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and then okay, like uh, then I think another thing I have to highlight from this episode: it comes from basically talking to reformed. Uh, like women members of like white supremacist uh, far right hate groups now like deprogram who, who people. now deprogram people by taking them like white water rafting <laughs> <laughs> taking them to the wilderness and look, and look, look I'm not I'm not hating on these women too much you know because like like look look they're 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 doing good work and like you know I like I, I'm I'm not blaming them for their former associations or whatever it is pretty funny though that she hadn't got that tattoo covered up in like a decade well she's got eight kids <laughs> yeah she is said like. God damn, she was just like straight out of straight out of John's Facebook. You know, I loved her. So they they cut from again talking about people who were former like hate group, uh, you know, propaganda, like former members of violent white supremacist organizations. One one woman being told like, if you leave, we'll kill you. They cut from that to Chelsea show or no Hillary showing Chelsea a Twitter thread by a globe emoji account that goes through all of her pantsuits and matches them with Keurig coffee machines that have similar colors. That, that wasn't even wouldn't, mean. Uh, like, that person's a fan. Like, what was the point there? Wouldn't happen with Nespresso. <laughs> <laughs> then, they, then they have another round table at a Mexican restaurant in D.C. This is like, my favorite scene. Which is like, okay, it's like a comedian, uh, Jamel Hill, uh, that like, Shannon, like Shannon, Shannon, Shannon Watts, Watts, who like is, you know, advocating for gun control and against the NRA. And then, okay, here is, a, here is the one moment in the two hours of this show with Chelsea Clinton that I remember that made a lasting impression on me because of how jaw-droppingly insane the things she says that passes off like she's like she says this that like it's a normal thing just like a, a thing to share or like a a, a personal anecdote that's amusing oh or charming so she says they're, they're at a, a mexican restaurant in dc 
And Chelsea says, me and my family used to come here all the time. She goes, I would actually come here with, uh, you know, like my grandmother, with Hillary, with your mom. I would come here with grandma. And my now and, husband. And she says, and my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband. And we would come here all the time. And I would always be the designated driver. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I, I was just like, my, I was like, what? These people are aliens. Like, okay, it's one thing that, like, you're having dinner all the time with your grandmother and boyfriend, but that every one of these dinners, you were the designated like they driver. They were all getting so like, sloshed they're getting, on they're getting, Mars. Yeah, that they're getting fucking <laughs> soused on margaritas, and she's just sitting there. Okay, Catherine, because you talk about the, the fajita platter moment. Oh, my moment. God. Oh, my God. Okay, um, when they bring out, did you, did you guys catch this? They bring out um, Hillary's, like, sizzling fajitas, and she mm. says, oh, my God, and then she says, this is truly unbelievable. <laughs> it was like it's, it, it was like her face, her face. Like this woman has never seen sizzling fajitas she, before. What will they think of next? <laughs> like her face, like in the photo with the balloons, where it's like childlike wonder. She's like, oh wow, they bring out food sizzling hot. <laughs> she she might never have had a fajita now that I think about it. This is truly unbelievable. They probably that's probably another Herculean editing job because like just. The natural, the natural haplessness of the Clintons. Like the one woman at the table is probably like, yeah, and that's like they took a gun and they like put it in my mouth and they said they showed me like my grandmother's address and they said if we leave and then just, psst, oh my goodness, can you just come out right at that moment? Well, and there's there's such aliens. Timing. There's such aliens that like I don't think Hillary really knows what to say when uh, like a plate of food. Like, what does a human say when a plate of food is put before them at a restaurant? Can you believe this? <laughs> uh, so then they go to the uh, the the Megan the Stallion interview, and you know, like I I like Megan the Stallion. I I think she's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I dig her songs or whatever. But I'll tell you one thing: she's unapologetically her. That is very yes. true. A uh, this is a scene. Woman. This is a scene where they paint with Cardi B in like the backyard no, of her. With Megan the Stallion. Oh no! So no, no, with Megan the Stallion. Sorry, no, oh, no. Canceled. No, no. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you. No, no. I'll tell you why. Because I was already in my mind going to this next point, which was again a line that will probably oh, be rattling so through good. my head as like the DMT hits my brain. It's like. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> And like the last thing that will go in my head is Hillary Clinton interviewing Megan Thee Stallion and saying, I became aware of you because of the Cardi B WAP. No, she says, I came to awareness of you with the Cardi yes. B WAP. I came to a, even more convoluted and politician-y and weird. I came, I came, to, came to awareness, awareness of, of you. you. Greetings, Earthlings. We came to awareness <laughs> of you in the transmission of the Cardi B rap. WAP. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. WAP. <laughs> Wet ass pussy. <laughs> She the been thing, the former she, first lady said, "What ass pussy?" <laughs> she like the she makes John Kerry look like one of those just like greased up Italian guys whose job is fucking married women. <laughs> just one of, yeah, like the slickest operator smooth, in the world, yeah, smoothest man alive compared to her. Oh my god. Uh, then they, they interview ContraPoints. They go, they go to Bal Balmore to interview ContraPoints. Like, this is this is the point in the episode where I stopped taking notes because, like, my brain turned off. I mean, like, no, again, I'm not hitting on ContraPoints either, but it was just, like, the, 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 these these interviews became so boring well, they just at this had, point. They, they just asked ContraPoints, like, what do we do about hate? Which is, like, like the, that's that's a baby brain. Like, what does that even mean? Like, what are Watch you trying to get at YouTube there? Watch my YouTube videos. That's the answer. The answer is people need to stand up. And speak out. All these things are about women who stand up and speak out. The idea being that the speaking is going to change everyone's mind to make everything better. So watch yeah, like those consequence videos raising and you'll awareness. Stop being racist. Yeah, like the politics uh, of like raising awareness being yeah. uh, like a political act. The only act. thing that is, exists in any of these Consuming shows. Consuming media. About valorizing. I, okay, so I like the ContraPoints interview specifically because it like, I mean, I think it was edited to shit because of this specific moment in it where like, Chelsea and Hillary are just giving their usual pablum about standing up to hate and accountability and Contra very aptly goes like, okay, well, like what the fuck does accountability mean? Because they're talking about like canceling and how canceling isn't good, but then accountability is good. And Contra point Contra basically goes like in a nice way of saying everything that you're saying is like completely meaningless. And they just completely leave that interview and never come back. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know. I do love how they, they have to, they have to yeah. clear yeah. these two rocks, right? Because you've got 
Hillary, who's instinctively like, cancel culture, no thanks. She just thinks of those hordes of Bernie bros who are nipping at her heels. I mean, she wants to destroy these people. She has no sympathy for them. And then you've got millennial weepy, uh, I got picked on by Rush Limbaugh, uh, and uh, and I guess Julia Sweeney, uh, Chelsea, who's like, no, we need to have accountability. And so they have to have this mealy mouth thing of, well, accountability is good, but you shouldn't cancel someone for who they are. It's like, what the fuck is that? Who? What are you even talking about? It's just so it's you're just basically saying canceling is good when I say it is, which is literally what everyone says. Congratulations, right. bold uh, take. I guess, yeah, contra- I I like uh, I think contrapoints is like an incredibly thoughtful person, uh, and it is. Yeah, this was. Um, I would love to see the full cut of that interview because, like, it just like you did. She is like disappeared, Stalin style. What she knows, <laughs> what the fuck is accountability? The contrapoints vanishes. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll take away from the contrapoints interview is uh, contrapoints' house in Baltimore looks pretty dope, beautifully appointed. Like yeah, the dining room that they were cool. sitting in, uh, extremely nice. Her tea party puts uh, Amy Schumer's to oh, shame. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Like that, that was the last note I had on this episode. Do you guys remember anything else from the refusing hate episode? Oh, oh, I remember. I was keeping a running list of things documented on this show that Hillary is bad at. Uh, She's bad at clowning. (laughs) She's bad at painting. She's bad at bowling. And then she's bad at crocheting because, like, the episode ends with this very trite, like, uh, she's crocheting with Heather Heyer's mom and the mom of uh, Richard Collins, who was also, like, killed in a hate crime. And, like, Hillary is fucking up crocheting so bad. Do you remember, like, the huge controversy about, like, learn to knit, Hillary? She's literally uh, failing to learn to knit on television. <laughs> <laughs> that, see, that, that part for me was the grotesque element of this particular gumbo. Uh, the, the, the interview with these uh, parents of, of, of hate crime victims, because it's Hillary trying to equate these two experiences. These people who were murdered for their beliefs or their skin color uh, are facing the same persecution as I am. The fucking yes. former secretary of state and head of an international crime syndicate. Someone, someone yes. who is supposed to yeah. bitch in my replies. Like these things are equivalent. I um, I I this yeah, I agree that like this is just a stomach churning scene, mainly because of what Matt said. Yeah, like the false equivocation that they're all they're linked by standing up to hate. Um, and they have all kind of given. They've all sorry, refusing not hate, amount. not refusing standing up to hate. it. Hey, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, but they, they, uh, Hillary has probably like the worst bedside manner I've ever seen, or whatever you call that, where, yeah, like Heather Heyer's <laughs> mom, just like Heather Heyer's mom, like talking about, yeah, the worst thing that can ever happen, like your child murdered. And Hillary, Hillary reacts to it like someone talking about, uh, you know, they accidentally threw out their keys on garbage day. <laughs> like it just, she's looking into this woman's eyes and, ju- and it, her reaction is like, Oh, well, you know, isn't that just what a Wednesday is like? It's, it's the smile. <laughs> well, she's still smiling ago. and nodding. Like her reactions yeah. are all like, they all hit at exactly the same pitch. Yeah, no, she is. I'm surprised that they didn't like do anything to it. I'm surprised they didn't like, I mean, they could do de-aging. Can they do like, re-empathying <laughs> can they like oh, use I- james cameron's cgi technology to like make her face move in a convincing way when someone describes losing a child or at least downplay the smile a little oh, bit uh, make, make yeah. the nods a little shallower <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh wait I, 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 this is this is something i forgot to bring up from the the first comedy episode but this is a similar moment where it, when it ceased to be funny and became actually nauseating to me and in, in, in the stand-up comedian round table, like they're talking about like, you know, what, you know, like 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 men can get away with and white men in particular can just sort of like breeze through life and never have to clean up their messes or like, you know, they think like they're allowed like all this like they, to fuck up and like, you know, the, no, no one ever holds them. It's just like what white men can do in our society and take for granted. And Hillary Clinton just goes, ah. That's the society we live in. I mean, come on, like what, what you know, like, what these like white men can do and get away with. And it's just like men like my husband, Bill Clinton, and his many, many sex crimes that he's never been held to account yeah, like, this for. Is, this is not unrelated yes. to uh, like y- you are a cog in this machine and you're, in fact, like a very large cog. <clears throat> Sorry, his alleged sex crimes. 
But like, you know, the fact that he was close friends with uh, Jeffrey Epstein for as long as he was is just she's like, there's, what white men get away with is just simply unbelievable. There, there's a similar moment in the, this episode, the Refusing Hate episode. They're sitting around with the neo-Nazi deprogrammers and one of them is bemoaning just like, you know, we live in such a violent society. And Hillary is just like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's so true. Like not taking any uh, accountability for the fact that, like, why do we live in a violent society? I don't know. Uh, failure to pass meaningful gun uh, law reform or I don't know, starting wars All anywhere wars we please. you started. You know, like this is this is not like an, an external thing to you. Like you are you've you've made the world a more violent, more misogynist place. That's what makes I, this whole thing so sick, because she keeps interviewing these people who are victims of her own awfulness, you know, and it's like they don't even seem to be able to recognize it. I think it'd be too painful to. And, you know, hey, I get to meet this famous person and be on TV. I can understand. But it's a total it, like, externality she to talks them. To. So, all right. So this is a good segue. So I watch the rest of this fucking thing. Yeah, no, Matt uh, is all about total okay. commitment. Total. Me and Jack D. Ripper. Total commitment. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and th- I'm glad I did because the third episode is probably the most risible piece of shit yet. Probably. It's like, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to have to watch this as soon as we're done with this. Yeah. You did about this show without having seen this episode. Kind of amazing to me. It's What's the third one? Women seek justice. And it oh, is about no. women doing uh, criminal justice reform. So it is Hillary talking to a bunch of uh, defund the police type activists and uh, uh, people who've been. No, no, not defund the police. Not that at all. Sorry. Uh, Activists around uh, reducing sentences, getting people out of jail, uh, and just the idea of like decarcerating in some meaningful degree. And so she's talking to these people who are part of it. One of them is somebody whose mom was like uh, a crack uh, addict and kept getting arrested and and going to jail. And she's talking to Hillary Clinton and she's like, she didn't need to go to jail. She needed rehabilitation. And Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton is standing there going, yes, uh huh, absolutely. <laughs> Just oh like my Ms. God. Ms. Super oh my God. Oh you my God. You fucking fuck. vampire to just stand there, their stone face go. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. You like built your fucking castle on these people's bones. <laughs> what, what's the, What's the fourth episode? Like why it's bad to run a sort of like blood and soil, uh, white identity politics campaign in the democratic party in 2008. <laughs> Yeah, and we asked the yeah the people who survived the Bernie Sanders doing that. That's right, me. Yeah. I'm the victim again. Yeah, we need yeah. we need an episode deprogramming Bernie Bros. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so she, she has this a conversation with these women who've been absolutely dicked over by the 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 incarceration state that her and her husband helped create, and she did not acknowledge any of that. greatly like, escalate the to, war on drugs. To, yet, uh, we need to. So either people like that, other women, another hair raising story. This woman was married to a abusive uh, correctional corrections officer. And this guy was beating her up all the time and she would call the police and they kept dismissing it because he was a law enforcement. And then she left him finally. And he shot her 10 times. Good one God. more. What is that? One more than 50 cent, I believe. Yeah. And she, and then he was convicted, but he was only sentenced to 10 years. She says one for every bullet he put in me. And then she became a cop. Oh, my God. Excuse me? She became a police officer. Hillary's like, why? So you've seen the, how broken the justice system is. What made you want to be a police officer? And she's like, it is broken, but I feel like we can change it from the inside. <laughs> and it's like, God damn, that is brutal to just be that conditioned, to not I, be able to get, like, even think of getting out of that. Like, these are the bad guys. Jesus Christ, run away. I'm gonna I'm gonna reform the SD from the inside in 1941 in Germany. I uh, uh, the the rap thing. Um, it reminded me of another thing. This obviously pales in comparison to things about violence in the carceral state. You know, Hillary just nodding as usual. But okay, to rewind a little bit at the rap thing when they talk about how conservatives made such hay about WAP. Who can I remember? Who's the last time someone in power did something like that about a maybe a rapper, a woman rapper, perhaps? Oh, he's just a soldier. Sister soldier? Like, yeah. Yeah. They, like, That's a good point. Every single Jesus. thing. Every <laughs> single your thing. Like, when, it mattered, when it mattered and I was in the driver's seat, I fucking uh, destroyed you people like the bugs you are. But now I'm forced to suck up to you because all I could do is hang around in the culture because my power base has been destroyed. On well, times, times have changed. <laughs> and so yeah, I, I now need to suck to you like a barnacle. And that's what's so disgusting because it's these people who have been horribly traumatized by the, the system. 
uh, celebrities who are just hobbyists. And then these fucking disgusting opportunists who are clearly just getting in on the ground floor of a fucking lifestyle politics scam. Like actual mm. lizard people because they, they they can just change their skin whenever they want. It's wild. So it's like part of it is like this. It's honestly an infomercial for like the NGO uh, state, like the liberal NGO world that she's like uh, queen of. Uh, and then she's got these horrible interviews with the victims of her own violence and then fun tea parties with celebrities. So this episode has these like grim interviews with these women who have struggled a lot. Uh, and then, of course, that's gross. So they needed to cleanse the palate. So they have an interview uh, uh, with noted criminal justice reformer and attorney Kim Kardashian, Ugh. where they discussed how brave she was for doing her advocacy that got that lady out of jail. Not saying at all that it was Donald John Trump himself that fucking got that lady out of jail. <laughs> Hillary in a million years would not have fucking. You're telling me Hillary Clinton is president would have fucking. A, 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 what was she a murderer or something? She was she was a, a big time drug dealer, whatever it was. She's going to let her out on the streets. Hell no. Hillary Clinton doesn't need your ass at that point. Trump was like because he was like a goldfish braid. You know, the lady with the large but uh, she makes a good point. Let's do it. It was um, Trump. That, like the, the, the point you made, like before we started recording about what was it like in, in some context of like uh, civil rights and how inspired she was by it. But like when she yeah, yeah, was we'll talk, that's a later Goldwater. episode. Yeah. But she uh, yeah. she just like she just rewrites her history and it just. Like there's an episode about the LBGTQ TX community in this episode. And of course she talks about it and they even breeze by the fact that, oh yeah, you were against gay marriage for a long time, right? Just, uh uh-huh. Well, I had the, I had an amazing evolution like many people did. So like she gets credit at every point for being in the right. She's either like, she's either doing the right thing pragmatically for her, like her career and therefore the greater good, or she's, uh, she's fighting the struggle by which means when it's uh, politically convenient to do so. I, I think that's the other main objective of the show. Like it's a hard launch of Chelsea as, you know, she's the next Clinton. She's uh, Ooh, going to be the that, standard. That a, if, if, that, if, if that's a hard launch, that you're talking about the, the USS that that the Challenger. Just not, just not like, <laughs> but, but it's also about, you know, like Hillary myth making and like, you know, uh, uh, her, you know, uh, protecting her legacy. Right. She's always right at every moment. She's always embodying the, the, the rights, the right side of history. She's smugly content to be uh, more realistic than the idealists and more idealistic than the cynics, which makes them her the perfect person. But a day late and a dollar short, she says the right things. Uh, and it's nauseating to see her reinscribe this with her victims. It's like Rupert Pupkin holding the fucking Jerry Lewis hostage and making him do his <laughs> talk show. Like <laughs> Dance for my amusement, puppets. It's sick shit. So she talks to Kim Kardashian, blows her about what a fucking brave she was. Oh, my God. You, you took the bar four times. Congratulations. Wow. I really respect <laughs> your intellect. Pass. I really respect your intellect. Oh, they also have like a uh, a uh, little trivia match, like a, a bar question trivia match. Like, you know. See, uh, that's just cruel. Kim Kardashian has not they do it as passed a quiz, the bar. A qui- they, they do it as a, uh, as a game show between Kim and the lawyer Hillary. And. Hillary is clearly not like having fun at that. And he is really, really having a hard time keeping her contempt for Kim Kardashian uh, at a low fucking simmer. But then the best part is that woven through all of this thing uh, is this uh, interaction they have with Mariska Hargitay uh, in a (laughs) Manhattan studio or bookstore where they do owl style monologues. What? Yes. Where they teach them about storytelling. So they did the, they did the clown college. Now they're doing a storytelling class where they're going to learn to do monologues. They do know that Mariska Hargitay is a fake uh, woman cop, right? Like having her on the criminal justice show is like. Uh, I mean, no, Hillary doesn't. This mainstream does, that that's all AOC stuff. Uh, cop again. They don't buy into that. Like, remember, these are the people. This is not the full li- t- li- Twitter liberal experience. This is the more curated, more uh, boomer. Uh, so they like her because they like she's on the TV shows they watch. Uh, and she's also a seemingly kind of uh, uh, she's very actory, I guess I would say. She's very theatrical and it's kind of honestly cringe inducing. And she does this very theatrical performance. And eventually Chelsea gives a monologue. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. And it is a story from her childhood. And it is a story about how she's on the on the uh, playground and she's like maybe third grade. And uh, uh, one of her mean classmates comes up to her, one of this, this boy. And he says, uh, say, uh, Chelsea, what do you think of Miss Hannigan? Hannigan, that's whatever the name of her, their class teacher was, third grade teacher was. And she goes, oh, I love Miss Hannigan. And this kid says to her, well, you know what the nicest thing you can say to somebody to, to say that you really like them? Fuck you. 
And so <laughs> then Chelsea says she went up, ran up to Miss Hannigan and said, hey, Miss Hannigan, fuck you. And then she said that because that school still had corporal punishment, she was paddled in the hallway by Miss Hannigan. <laughs> Oh my what? God. And then Miss Hannigan like cried and hugged her afterwards. What? Chelsea, like, what? Her life is what? insane. Like, she had no uh, other option but to become an, an alien. Is, I wish you could see Felix's face right now. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, no, it's like this psychosexual, like, oh, like, this is a relationship of, of maternal uh, relation. Like, like being dominated and then accepted by like a mother figure that she never had in her entire life. So it's like this fucking tree of life memory to stand in to the rest of her life where she's just this just shadow appendage of her psychotic mother. That is the saddest thing is like she'll never understand like how significant that is. Like nope. she had this she just thought it was a fun story to tell on the owl. Yeah, yeah, she like she had this thing that like yeah, only would happen in like a Terrence Malick movie. Like only that would have so much yeah. symmetry to the adult you became and would like anyone with any type of like guile self-awareness. or self-awareness. Yeah, would like if you remember that you'd like burst into tears. You'd be well, You certainly you wouldn't had, recount it to anyone. Well, yeah, like if that if it related to your current life that much, you'd be like, "Oh my fucking god, it was like written in the stars, like all these pathologies I have this encapsulates it perfectly but she get like it's like basically her dmt moment at the end of her life yes exactly that 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 staring her spank yeah it's staring her in the face and she's like so um that brings mean tweets a new meaning when i see fuck (laughs) you like it's just fucking nothing just fucking whooshes through her like she is. I know that you said that they're trying to like, yeah, intro her as a like lifestyle brand thing, which I agree. I think they're trying to do that, but it's like she is so like. Not only do I think Baron Trump ha- would have a better shot of being like a presidential kid star, I think that he would have a better shot doing like women's lifestyle branding. <laughs> <laughs> he could have his own shapewear line. Baron could have his own shapewear line like that. Yeah. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea's like, an emotional sieve, right? Like everything just passes through her and she's recounting every single one of her core memories, particularly like anything that involves, you know, a, a stand in for her own mother, like is traumatic. And, and oh, she yeah, doesn't it's just like this trauma. Like all, all she remembers about the White House is being laughed at on television. I mean, I mean I, like, I, you I, know, not, not to risk probably never around. I mean, not to risk being like uh, Rush Limbaugh, or the writers of SNL here, like. I like I, I do genuinely like I, I kind of felt bad for Chelsea after. No, I feel bad for her. I really feel bad for her. Be this way. She and, never and, and, asked like, she to be this no, way. This is not no, her like, fault. Like she's that grown. She's that grown. What are you supposed to do when you're like a veal calf like that? Like, what do you expect of people? Like, I I I, I mean we're we're mean to her, I guess, but <laughs> it is a I mean, terrible so, like, show. I'm sorry. Yeah, but like bad. I gotta say I gotta say though, like I mean, as bad as I feel for her, like watching her on this show. I like one cannot help but be struck by that. Like she has nothing to say about no. anything. When in fact, like it's the wild. more you hear her talk, she has no, no point of view at all. Like it, it becomes she just totally repeats, apparent. She just repeats platitudes. Like, you know, like you're in school to like, you know, uh, repeat the series of words that like teacher will be impressed by. She has no point of view or personality at all. Well, but like watching this show, it becomes so apparent. Like you can see exactly how she was made, like exactly how she became Chelsea Clinton, especially like seeing her mom right next to her. It's like, oh, this makes perfect sense why you became this. It's a fascinating document for that reason. It's very it's it's yeah. it's. It's this open like pseudo documentary like you, they're trying to tell you one story, but like because they are so, because they can't know how they look to others because of the bubble they live in. They are pre- they present themselves in this like shocking light. They're telling uh, the story of their own pathology. Like that's yeah. the real that's the real thing that they can't miss make away. Right. Like uh, the, the, the like rotting pathology at the heart of the Clinton family. It all gets reflects. It all gets it all gets observed one way or the other. So the, I'll go through the rest of these quickly. Uh, so episode four was gutsy women are rebel hearts, which is the, uh, that's the LBGT, uh, uh, feminism (laughs) sort of, uh, social issues. You're going Trump with LGBT. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't remember which one. I'm sorry. It's the episode about, uh, trans issues. It's the episode about, uh, gay marriage and, uh, and feminism. So they talk to, 
uh, Gloria Steinem and Abby Wambach. I didn't really know who a lot of these people were. I got to be honest. Uh, and it's you just know a, it's, just a who's it, who of like who the CIA is following on Twitter. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it's because I am a misogynist, but it was the most boring episode for me. I'm sorry. Uh, Got to be, be honest. Actually, no, the, the, the fifth is also very boring. Gutsy women are forces of nature where she talks to environmental activists. She talks to Jane Goodall. And that was just sad because, you know, they're just they're talking around like the 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 vastness of the problem, you know, that we face because they can't address it. So they just end up like poor Jane Goodall is like, yeah, we're seeing biodiversity destroyed. She ends up just all she can really say is, you know, hey, you know, we're all of us that wow. impact the planet every day. And keep keep and raising we can, awareness. We can raise awareness and we can like we can make our little. And it's like, yeah, it's like that's not true. But also, what else could you say at that point? You know, I'm 85 years old. Leave me alone. She was literally drinking whiskey during the entire interview. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's like that one was just kind of sad. That's one where Chelsea was uh, beamed in remotely to an interview and it looked at, and felt exactly the same. The energy in the room was exactly the same. <laughs> kind of like a um, Marvel movie, right? Like yeah, there's no yes, weight exactly. or appreciation for space. Yep. Uh, I'd say that the one that was probably most uh, uh, cringe inducing was probably uh, episode six, Gutsy Women Step Up, uh, which is an extended visit to the Amber Ruffin writing room. Uh, oh, man. Does anyone know that show? That show no. is like, that is okay. So every time I've seen a clip posted from this show that is ostensibly a late night comedy. It is just like um, a monologue that like usually pretty, uh, pretty thoroughly references like history and discrimination and stuff like this, but just never not a, I've never seen a single joke from that show. <laughs> I've seen multiple segments, both monologues and like sketches. And it just like, it is the most, um, they don't use a live studio audience or at least on the clips I've seen, which is interesting because it is just dead silence. It seems yeah. to be like the most humorless dictum, like in such a weird format for that. Like it makes Rachel Maddow look like a cut up. Every punchline is like, you got your mansplaining and your manspreading. Oh, that's all right. I guess I, I, I missed some A material. Matt, what's the episode where they hang out with Goldie Hawn and Kate Hudson? Uh, that's the last episode. But so the Ruffin episode, it's, it's them trying to get Hillary and Chelsea to be funny like write jokes and perform. They already them tried the, that on this sketches. show. It yeah. Failed. And it's like, it didn't work. It did. It's failed. It's awful. They're both terrible. Of course, Chelsea is, is uh, Hillary is sort of, is hilariously stiff. Chelsea is just, uh, is just not Absent. there. Uh, then episode six, seven is gutsy women take leaps, which is another one that is very nauseating. Uh, they go back to Arkansas. They go back to little rock where the family made their name. Uh, of course, for the first time since they left the government, because what, what, why would they stay? Did, like, visit did, visit did, all they, of Bill's rape victims. Did they, did they visit the airstrip where all the drug trafficking went down? Yeah, did they, yeah, they went did to they, Are there no? Are there sl are there slaves still waiting there like Huel? <laughs> 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 it was pretty gross because Chelsea's like, I loved growing up in Little Rock, and it's like, really, when when was the last time you were there? How how often do you visit? <laughs> Like you, this was name, this, you're name sure you were going here if this show wasn't around. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, so they go to Little Rock and she sits down with two of the Little Rock Nine who integrated uh, uh, Little Rock uh, Central High School in 1959. Uh, and this is another one where it's like you want to puke. And so they, they talk about like their their struggle and how they stood up and they stood out and they risked everything and they struggled to get an education because racism is bad. And Hillary's like, I was living in Chicago in an all-white suburb, and I saw on television those little girls, and I was inspired by their bravery, and and they made and they made me aware of the world outside of my town, and that uh, there were people who were making other things, making things happen, and then you responded to that by going door to door for Barry Goldwater in 1964, whose entire campaign was an opposition to the Civil Rights Act. May she didn't that say was, she had a it's positive like just, reaction to yeah, that. I was inspired. Inspired to what, Hillary? Prevent, when you prevent saw these the integration going of that to school. school. What were you inspired to do? A uh, fight against integration. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's what takes she did. Many it's forms. Like, and again, she's got to like smile at these women inspired. and bullshit them. Like, I was so inspired by you. Yeah, I bet you were, Hillary. I bet you're inspired. You're inspired to do something. Uh, yeah. Um, you're inspired to get go on the AO, AUH20 train. Come on. Get out of uh, here. Like, Let's bullsh okay, so so what is the hook that uh, puts them in a room with Goldie Hawn and Kate Hudson? Because this is the only other That's thing. That's the I'm last really episode. Show. Gutsy okay, women yeah. are a bunch of mothers. 
And it's just oh, a okay. bunch of mother daughter combos. It's, it's mother daughter combinations and talking to mothers and their daughters who do different things. Some of them have businesses, some of them do activism. And of course, there's some more celebs because we got to have the celebs. If that's one of the things that keeps them alive is, 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 uh, is uh, proximity to celebrity. So they they drain some life force out of uh, Kate Hudson and Goldie Hawn, and they just have a they just have a nice old wine o'clock evening. It's fun. I think Goldie Hawn may be the only Republican she's talked to in this entire series. Yeah, Mother's presumably, daughter- presumably she's like relatively chill. It'd be funny if she was into QAnon, and they bring her on to gutsy, and then she's just like, "Let's talk about the basements. Let's talk about the dungeons, Hillary." Well, I have you what here, Hillary. To Seth Rich. Mothers and Daughters is an interesting show. I mean, obviously, that's what they got. That's what they're going to do. But, you know, often one of nature's uh, most horrifying pairs of natural enemies, Mothers and Daughters. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Certainly the relationship uh, that uh, Hillary and uh, Chelsea seem to have. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, I So I think that, like, I'm excited to see what they do with the Chelsea lifestyle, like women's lifestyle brand attempt. Because, like, I, I'm very interested by the world of, like, women's lifestyle influencers. I think that they fill this very interesting sort of, like, unprecedented space in media where, like, it, it's sort of bifurcated where, like, some of them, the, the point is that they're perfect. They do everything perfect. They are they are homemakers and chefs and everything. They're in this aspirational. Way that is, yeah, that is impossible. Like, Martha Stewart's one of those, kind of, I think. Like, the sort of the hook with Martha Stewart is like, you could never do this. Like she's just, she's the fucking best at it. And you, she has a whole team of gays around her. Yeah. Acting as little elves. The women watching her always kind of hate her for it. And that's kind of the point, but you also learn a lot, but then uh, there's sort of the new breed, which is like the more internet born ones where the point is that they suck. Like (laughs) I don't will has gathered ever shown you like uh, any YouTube influences she likes. Because, like, if you're ever shown those by a romantic partner, I've been shown, like, six or seven, and, like, the point, w- the, the all it is is just, like, this one's boyfriend's gay, and they hate each other, this one dresses like an asshole, this one's depressed. Or like, I'm a, I'm a drunk bitch. Know it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, and- I don't know if Catherine shares her YouTube influencers with me, but she'll just... What she will do is share her Instagram Discover page, no, which is mostly no, videos, which no. is mostly videos of bot flies being pulled out of people's feet. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's good. But that's also, good watching. Come on. Also, lizards being peeled. They take up the they take off the toenails. <laughs> they got all the, the encrusted. Uh, will got so mad stuff. at me the other night. I, we were just he was just showing me videos of like oh like cats, and I was like let's mosey on to my Discover page on Instagram, and it was like. Uh, I'm going to forget the term now, but like uh, the anal glands on a dog when there are like three of them just being popped, like uh, one of those toys from Toy Story. I love that women have their own goatsy and tub girl. It's amazing. It's, what <laughs> it a is. Great it's goatsy for girls. Yeah, I I think that Chelsea. I don't know if they'll do this this way. Probably not. But I do think Chelsea has a future as like an influencer that you pity, which seems to be half of them. It seems to be that half of them <laughs> exist. So. Um, they're just objects like uh, village dunces. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I, I I don't I don't know where to wrap this one up here. I'm I'm probably gonna actually like I've, I've, based on your description, Matt. I kind of feel like I have a a really perverse like perversely drawn to finish watching this TV series. Yeah, I, I'd and say I hope they do a second watch, season. You don't have to watch all of them. Uh, I'd say like the, the the nature one is is pretty boring. But the one when they go to Arkansas is something. And yeah, like you got to have fun with uh, with Goldie and the gals. It sounds like a Freudian case study. Like it's the whole show. Right. It There's, sure it's is. definitely some sort of uh, coded criminal confession, too. That's for sure. I, I don't know about you guys, but my physical after effects of watching this. <laughs> I woke up four times in my sleep last night. <laughs> She's in your house right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just holding a knife and going, isn't this just amazing? It's so sharp. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> It'd be funny uh, if you got haunted by Chelsea and you just literally never knew. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, like a uh, uh, like a, a local uh, a psychic comes over to visit. And he's like, "Oh my god, this is the most infested house I've ever been in." It's like, really interesting. <laughs> <laughs>
I never noticed. She's just anything. been standing in the corner in the corner yep. the whole time. You yep. didn't even feel the coldness of a ghost nope. presence. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, like uh, th- th- that's it for this episode. But like, uh, if you really, you know. Come and see TV, you know, <laughs> run, don't walk to watch Gutsy on Apple TV. An, an, an astonishing program. I mean, it's like, something. It, it's jaw dropping. And gentlemen, gentlemen, it was it was Gutsy of you to have this gal on the pod. So thank you. Absolutely. We're going to do a six art. part Apple Plus series now about it, about the making of this episode. Uh, tour, well, touring around town play. and just talking to talking to gals going their own way. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna play hacky sack with Jenna Elfman. <laughs> <laughs> I I will be the first to say it's my gutsy pleasure. Thank did you. you notice, oh, that that did you notice by the way in the middle episodes Hillary kept saying gutsy like she was getting B roll and then just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I personally enjoyed that. It was a real like turning to my date saying look that's gutsy uh, moment throughout. 